Yeah, but just like in regards to positioning and stuff, I'd say that is the biggest difference that I can notice between myself and people that are better than me that beat me all the time. They just like are covering so many options with like their placement on the map, like where it's just like so well spaced that they have so much coverage. And I, I noticed that I lack in that. Like I'm a little bit, I don't always have, you know, multiple options covered. I'm kind of like all in on one. Okay, and I can I can talk about that a little bit as well. If you feel like higher level players are covering more options, whether or not they're actually using stronger stronger moves or faster moves, it's more so the fact that they're using moves that are going to keep them safe, and if they happen to hit you, they're getting themselves a, situ a situation, and then, as a competent player, they can take that situation and turn it into more, versus saying, okay, I got an air, that doesn't combo at, let's say, 70, and then I just like let you down off a platform or back to the ledge for free. Versus getting there and then scaring your air dodge out and then catching you and then putting you on the ledge and then ledge trapping you for like 40 or potentially killing you. Right. Yeah. The, the situation started out for this started out the same for both of us. However, one player got a kill, the other person just got the nair and that's it. As far as like we'll just say with regards to juggle situations, if let's say you happen to hit with a nair and it's not gonna kill, the first thing you should know obviously is where's your nair send me? It's gonna be up and away from you, which means you're gonna get yourself a juggle situation. It might be off stage. But if I'm way up here, like super high up, I would not consider that a edge guard situation because I can easily drift above the stage without using my jump. I'm not saying that I will do that, but I could do that. So if anything, you don't want to like go out here and try and hit me. What you'd like to try and do is wall me out from getting back to center stage. So if you're going to go up here and throw out an up air, that's fine. Or if you want to try and like throw an up air a little bit lower and potentially scare me. So if I do happen to go like this, for example, I'm now on a platform going from a juggling phase into a sharking phase. If you happen to get me to like a sharking phase, you could be going for falling up airs. You could be going for nares. You could be going for back airs through the platform. Or if I do happen to air dodge like this and you see it coming from a mile away, you could just up smash and catch my landing or you can go for a back air before I even touch the ground or the platform this is another thing too at least this is just my philosophy of how i look at the game and this is like i'm going to just relate it to skateboarding okay and the way that i'm going to do this is when you're skateboarding if you know anything about it or even if you don't a combo in skateboarding more often than not is going from one piece of let's say wherever you are if you're doing something street let's say you're going from a kicker to a stair set to a rail that would all be considered combos or different phases of your of your line okay so Let's say the first part, let's say you're gaining speed, or let's just say you're doing your kick or whatever, and that could be getting your nair. The combo or the video or your, your line that you're doing for your skateboarding, whatever, is not done after that. Next thing that's going to happen is the next phase. So if you know you're transitioning from a kicker to a stair set or kicker to a rail, you're not done. You don't have to like stop focusing or like not try and say, okay, well, I, I can just take a break now. So like, no, you're still mid transition into the next thing. So the next thing here would be catching my landing. That's the next part of your trick or your combo or the line or string that you're doing. If you happen to catch my landing or scare, my air, scare an air dodge out of me or make me waste my jump, that's where you're going to now go to the next Next phase or to a different phase depending on where I go so it's not always going to be to this platform plus to say um let's say I try and like get on stage and I air dodge back like that and I recover like this getting that situation off of the nair let's say you got the nair then you jumped up and went for an up air and I said oh shit and I went like this and I went down here and I got like back to the ledge now that you're here this is another part of the phase let's say this is the rail the last part of the, the skateboarding line that we're doing once you're here you still have to complete your combo or your string or your trick and in the case of smash that would be doing the actual ledge trap just because i'm on the ledge don't think to yourself oh, okay like i got him where i want him and i have stage control now i'm just gonna go back here and just chill basically from this point you still have to continue on i almost think of it too with regards to going from section to section there's that in between between each combo part or each part of the line and i i don't know for me it just reminds me of skateboarding so much because within skateboarding another way that they will extend combos especially in the games or even in real life is they will use manuals do you know skateboarding at all, by by the way? I don't know too much. I mean, I've skateboarded a couple times, but well, I don't do really you know what know. a manual is? A manual is well, not like a super important thing for this, but a manual is just like a way of transitioning from one piece of equipment to another by like doing a wheelie or like being on the back two wheels or front two wheels of your skateboard. That would be a manual. Doesn't really matter from the context of skateboarding, but here a manual would be let's say if you get a neutral win, that's your first trick. Then you're going to manual or transition into a juggle phase. If you happen to hit them, that's your next trick. And then you're going to manual or transition to a ledge trapping phase. And then you're going to go for your ledge trap, which is your last trick. Okay. okay. So it's trick, manual, trick, manual, trick. Or in our case, hit, cover something, right? Cover an option. Get another hit if you can cover the next option then get another hit if you can so you're constantly thinking to yourself once you land a singular hit 
you always want to try and trans transition to the next, I guess, next phase of the game so you can continue to get damage or potentially get a kill, or this would just be the definition of advantage state. Another huge reason with regards to skateboarding, at least as to why people go for manuals to continue their combos, is because that's how you get a higher score. That's how you transition and you, you get a combo. Even in skateboarding, they do call it a combo. That's what you want to be thinking about. Whether or not it's skateboarding for you, it could be something else. That's just, that's where my mind goes specifically. But with regards to your new player your advantage state as this character since they don't have insane combos it's gonna have to be cover an option transition cover an option transition do that over and over again okay all right i can definitely try to use that that makes a lot of sense actually and then on top of that as well you have to think if take into consideration what do your moves do and where do they send your opponent if you know obviously your up air sends up your nair kind of sends up your fair sends out right your down air can send out or if you spike them it sends down if you hit someone you have to know okay if i hit someone with a nair it's going to give me a juggle situation if I hit somebody with a fair, it's going to give me an edge guard or a ledge trap situation. If they're on stage, it might be a tech chase situation. So you have to transition to the next thing and know before you even hit them that if I hit them, this is where they're going to go. And now this is where I have to go to now cover that. Okay, yeah, I can definitely try to do that. That's, right. that's the TED talk on, <laughs> on advantage state, but also being able to try to continue your advantage state so you're not getting that singular hit and then saying okay well now what right that, that singular hit is always always going to give you an opportunity of some sort where it's like well you got this this you got this the single hit you got the opportunity and you can turn it into more do you recognize that and i don't mean you personally but anybody do you recognize that you did something that was good more than just put on damage it's the stage control it's the advantage state it's the position that you've now gained you might have stolen a resource that's a huge thing that people don't really think about as far as like getting someone to waste an air dodge or a double jump because you can you can make someone waste their air dodge or double jump without even hitting them and they can get them back without hitting you so if you take them from somebody you make them waste it a lot of players kind of just have to go under the radar as not that important it's like okay they grab the legs they get their air dodge or their jump back so why would i care it's like well you should care because if they don't have those things and you chase them super aggressive off stage they literally can't stop you they have no choice but to get hit yeah for sure i can i can try to uh use all that for sure man that's that's gonna be the next big mentality thing for you i'd say that's also gonna be a big part of your autopilot too because like when, I, when we're playing and i'm just talking i just know where to go it's like well how do i know where to go if i'm not if i'm not in quotations paying attention to what's going on because like, i hit you with something i know it's gonna, where it's going to send you and then from that point forward i just follow up and put myself in a position to cover the next thing in the in the sequence so right there you got yourself out of position a little bit see this went too far back right if i am going to go for side b let's say if I, I really trust it then you should actually go for your counter because if you counter my side b it probably actually would kill me I have a bad habit of like doing moves to get out of tumble and then like insta fast falling while I'm still in lag. Yeah, it like, it's one of those things too. It's not wrong if you do that, but you should be drifting further off stage, especially if you have your jump. You don't have to think, okay, well, I'm trying to recover, therefore I have to recover immediately. You do have time to go out and around the edge, edge of the stage so that you don't get caught. You have space out there. As long as you have your jump and the ability to recover like it's, it's your recovery is not that difficult to do either so you should be totally fine either way like if you're playing a character who has to recover like a little mac or like sometimes a cloud or a roy or something then they kind of have to hold towards the stage but for you being not super floaty but floaty enough as long as you're on your fastfall you can drift around and you can recover from a low position and you still have your jump too you should be totally fine so if i chase you out there just drift towards the blast zone and get away from me right yeah for sure it's better to drift closer to the blast zone and not get hit versus trying to hold in and have good DI while being hit. Right? You're way better off to just not get hit because if you go way, way around and you still have your jump, if I chase you out there with my double jump, I'm not going to be able to now hit you and still recover without my double jump. I have to now start making my way back onto the stage. Okay. Oh no. I walked. I walked on them, guys. I'm sick. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll use walking a lot like in ledge trap situations there, too, because I want to get that micro space. So I put myself in a spot where if you were to go for a dash grab, provided that, let's just say that if I'm at the max range of your dash grab, if I if I go for a read, or if I, like, let's say, react, but in that situation, I definitely didn't react. I just made a read. I can get out of your burst range, as far as your dash grab, and still cover that same spot or have an overlapping hitbox with my F smash. So I didn't dash so far away 
that I was right about the grab, but my F smash completely missed. And that was lined up thanks to walking in that situation. I can say there, when I walked, it was for a fraction of a second. Like, I literally dashed up, walked back a tiny bit, and I just stood there. But that's still, it's part of your movement, right? Movement is not, I guess, how fast you can execute everything that you're doing. Movement is just the precision. I guess as an analogy, it could be like with regards to track and field. If you're running the 100 meter dash, you don't get a better placement or anything for taking more steps, right? You also don't get more, you don't get a better placement for taking less steps and have a huge, a, a huge stride. So essentially, Whoever is the fastest or the most efficient is the person that's going to win, right? Yeah. So same thing for this. It's not like you can win by playing fast and you can win by playing slow. It's whatever is the most efficient or whatever the situation calls for, right? I think golf would probably be a better example. It's not about who can hit the ball the farthest. It's about who can do, who can who can get their golf ball in the hole in the least amount of strokes. Making it. Saved you. Let's go. <laughs> Damn, say treat me. Unless, yeah, <laughs> that's my laser from earlier spiking. That's crazy. <laughs> oh man. Had to go for it. At least one. <laughs>